Hello everyone, in this video I will discuss DFD levels and quality checking of your DFD. If you haven't already watched it, I would start with the elements of a DFD video before watching this one. The learning objectives of this video are the same as those in the video called Elements of a DFD. Specifically, I want students to be able to explain the rules and style guidelines for data flow diagrams and ultimately be able to create meaningful data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams are built in a hierarchy. Business processes are too complex to be shown on a single diagram. A deliberate hierarchy is created with multiple levels of DFDs. To build a hierarchy, we use decomposition. So a child diagram shows a portion of the parent diagram in greater detail. You can see at the top of this slide there's a context diagram. The context diagram shows a single process with data flows to and from external entities. In the level zero diagram, the single process of the context diagram is broken out into more detail with more processes and data stores shown. This process is continued iteratively, so the processes one, two, and three in the level zero diagram can be broken down each into their own level one diagram as shown on this slide. Process one, which is process AA, has been broken down into 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3, and so on for each of the three processes. Processes are decomposed until each process is a single purpose primitive process. In practice, it's common to see level zero and level one diagrams, and while it's possible to have level two, level three, or even beyond, those are rare except in very complex systems. It's important to ensure that information presented at one level of a DFD is accurately represented in the next level. Data flows on parent diagrams are carried down to child diagrams. Child diagrams just add new processes and new data flows. At the end of the day, you want to have a set of complete data flow diagrams where you can refer back and forth to get more detail and information instead of trying to include everything on one diagram like this. The context diagram is the top level data flow diagram in every process model. You always include a context diagram. It shows the context into which the business process fits. It always shows a single overall business process as just one single process, which is numbered process zero. And it shows all the external entities that receive information from or contribute information to the system. A context diagram never has data stores on it because data stores are internal parts of your system, not external. You also always have a level zero diagram. Again, the level zero diagram shows all the major processes that comprise the overall system, the internal components of process zero. You show how they're interrelated to each other and with data flows. You also sh still show the same external entities and the major processes with which they interact. And you now add stored data via data stores. Again, each process in the level zero diagram can be broken out into its own level one diagram. Here you see process one, level one diagram. Create one level one diagram for every major process on the level zero. It shows the internal processes that comprise a single process on the level zero. And it shows how information moves to and from each of these processes. Because we have a large set of data flow diagrams, instead of trying to fit everything into one, it's important that you correctly number each one to help the user understand where the process fits into the overall hierarchy. The context diagram is always process zero. On the level zero diagram, your processes are always numbered with integer values. On the level one diagram, your processes always have one dot. For example, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 level two processes have two dots, and so forth. One good way to create data flow diagrams is to build them from your use cases. They often flow directly from your use cases. The names of your different use cases often become the major processes on the level zero diagram, and the steps within the use case often become the processes on the level one diagram. Inputs and outputs become data flows on the level one diagram and below. The textbook gave a good example of moving from a use case to a data flow diagram, showing the information in a more visual way. 
Finally, in figure 5-14 of the textbook, which is on page 174 in the 6th edition, there is an excellent quality checklist that, at least for this course, you should check after every time you create a set of data flow diagrams. Take a minute to review the checklist from this figure. You can pause the video and go back to the previous slide if you'd like. Ensure that you understand each bullet point in this quality checklist. Then ask any questions to me or on the class forums to clarify anything that might be confusing. It's really important to use this quality checklist to ensure that your data flow diagrams are correct and complete.